Well, he's already having a tough week because the impeachment hearings have begun and now a tell-all book from a Trump administration insider breaks. I'm Scott Ott and this is Bill Whittle Now. Uh, we are brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com as well as our friends over at the Patriot Post, America's News Digest. You'll find a link to the Patriot Post in the description below. Uh, Bill, here's the situation. Another Trump administration insider, in this case, the former uh, U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, has just released her book called With All Due Respect, and it says things like this about President Trump. In And this is a quote from Nikki Haley. In every instance that I dealt with him, he was truthful, he listened, and he was great to work with. Bill, how is the administration going to take this earthquake revelation from an insider? You know, I have to tell you, given um, just the relentless, just it, it, it's like it's like watching uh, piranhas. When you said Nikki Haley had a new reveal all book, and I know you set it up that way on purpose. But when, when I heard the quote and it turned out to be a positive quote, I about fainted. You know, I mean, I felt myself go like slightly dizzy in the head. Um, good for her, number one. Um, I have high respect for her, very high respect for her. Undoubtedly, this will be trumpeted across all of the front pages of newspapers all across the country um, as a as a. Uh, as a counterweight to the argument that Donald Trump's a lunatic, doesn't know what he's doing. Now, let me just say, to their credit, Axios.com, which had one of the stories, I saw an interview with her um, on one of the network newscasts, and I'm actually reading Nikki Haley's book right now, the audio version anyway, I'm hearing it in the book. Uh, but Axios.com uh, had a headline that said, Nikki Haley says Trump was always... And then they put the word truthful in quotes, but truthful. Oh, of course. Um, and then they did a pull quote in the story on the web, that quote I just read to you, in every instance that I dealt with him, he was truthful, he listened, and he was great to work with. Well, in that case, I have to say, in all fairness, truthful is that that those aren't scare quotes. That's legitimate. That's a legitimate use for quotations in a They're quoting in a her, yes. Yeah. Um, well, that's good. And uh, that's good for a, a number of reasons. First of all, I've heard some speculation that Nikki Haley uh, might be on the ticket um, instead of Mike Pence. I don't know if there's any truth to that. I got a, I've got a very high regard for Mike Pence. Um, I have a very high regard for Nikki Haley. Uh, and I was saddened to see her leave the administration, although I don't know anything about the details on that. So I imagine the book has something to do with it. But it was one you know, of the few uh, of what appeared to be actual mutual agreements to part that didn't involve any kind of acrimony um, or hostility. Good. That's very good. Um, I have a lot of hope for Nikki Haley in the future of, of the Republican Party. I think she's I don't think she's just an upcoming star. I think she's a front row star. And uh as I say, I have high regard for Mike Pence, but if circumstances were to boil out so that she was Trump's running mate in 2020, I think that would make a, a, an even, um, what I think is right at the moment anyway, a, a really solid uh, chance for winning, I think, um, uh, even better. Um, and, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm grateful that Nikki Haley has um, the grace to be thankful and to stand up and openly support people when they're under fire. Um, I've had situations when I was under fire. You've had situations when you're under fire. And uh, when when the, the, the piranhas start to gather, uh, it, it can just be so overwhelming. Really, you do want to just climb under a rock. I mean, that's the intention and that's the effect. And, and then, you know, most of us have the strength to kind of just kind of man up and get back out there and do it some more. But there's nothing like vocal, um, enthusiastic support for you when you're um, when you're in the water thrashing around like that, and uh, and I'm very grateful she has the grace and the and the class and the courage actually too the moral courage anyway uh, to to do that. From my reading of the book uh, or listening to the book, I'll tell you that it was fascinating to hear her description of uh, the meeting that she had with the then president elect Trump about uh, his offer of the UN ambassador post to her, and she went to him and essentially came to him with several uh, demands that uh, she expected would not go over well. Um, she said, first of all, I'm not used to, you know, she was the governor of South Carolina. I'm not used to having a boss, so I want, I don't want to report to anybody but the president of the United States. I want That's this. pretty cool, by the way. That's a pretty cool thing for her to say. Yeah. And I, and I don't, uh, 
I, I want to be on the cabinet. I want this to be a cabinet level position. And Trump effectively said, done. And she said, uh, foreign policy is very important as vis-a-vis -vis the United Nations. And so I want a seat on the National Security Council as well. He said, done. And then uh, she said, and finally, Mr. President, I need to know coming into this position that uh, I, since I know I'm not always going to agree with you, we haven't always agreed in the past, I need to know that you expect me to speak my mind and I intend to do so. And the president said, that's why I asked you to take the job. Do you know what Nikki Haley sounds like to me? No. She sounds like a commander in chief is what she sounds like to me. Well, those questions, those questions are are not only they're not only bold in the sense of 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 being um, assertive, they're extraordinarily reasonable questions. They're the kind of questions that a person um, with integrity would ask before they took the position. And they're and they're the kind of questions that a person who was going in to do a good job under her own under her own power, but with the understanding that she serves at the pleasure of the president. Those, those to me sounded like commander in chief questions, Scott. Those were the exact kind of questions phrased in exactly the right way that I think anybody with the, um, with the uh, integrity and the discipline and the, and the courage to lead this country would have. And she makes it clear that she did not always agree with the president. Uh, neither did others inside the administration. And let, let that, me give you an that took courage. Let me give you an example of this. Uh, and then uh, this is from her book tour interviews that she's now doing with the major media. Um, on the one hand, when they ask her a question about uh, what she thought of the Ukraine uh, phone call, she said something in this that I've only heard one other person, uh, and that was former uh, Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice. I'm sorry, former. Um, was she also Secretary of State? Or was I think she, she was, yes, National, National Security, Security Advisor. Um, so I get that confused and I'm old. Uh, but anyway, only she and Condoleezza Rice have I heard saying this. Um, Nikki Haley said, it's never a good practice for us to ask a foreign country to investigate an American. So she's bringing up an aspect of this that wasn't just, hey, did President Trump do something for his political advantage? She's basically saying... Um, the Here's president, a moral. Yeah, the president of the United States should not ask a government that is not constrained by our U.S. Constitution to engage in law enforcement activities against a U.S. citizen. That said, but that, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, but that, but that's not like Trump just said, oh, and I got something I want to know about uh, Hunter Biden. Trump, Trump made the request based on the fact that Hunter Biden and Joe Biden had interfered in Ukrainian politics in order to get this prosecutor off the case, right? So it wasn't like he was just coming out of left field and saying, hey, we'd like you to look into this American citizen of ours. This, this activity between um, the Bidens and the Ukrainian government had already happened under the Biden uh under the Biden watch. And he was basically saying, what can you tell me about what's going on with this, um, this firing of this uh, prosecutor based on influence from Joe Biden, not from, from uh, Donald Trump. And I think the implication of Haley's comment is she disagreed with the president asking a foreign government to look into something like that. That's really something for U.S. law enforcement. And if U.S. law enforcement has to coordinate okay. with a foreign government, uh, then they would do so, uh, not, okay. only, not only given the constraints of the U.S. Constitution so that we don't violate the Biden's rights, for example, uh, but also so that the ultimate case is admissible in a U.S court of law because it's been the information has been derived under within the constitutional constraints. I agree. I think it's sage advice. And I think that Donald Trump is a man used to making uh, personal deals on the telephone. And I think uh, looking back on it, I think he, he probably wishes he'd taken. I don't know if he I don't know if she advised him not to do it. But no, I she's, think just, she's saying this now and when they asked yeah. her what she thought of this. But but then she goes further, though, and, and I'm just paraphrasing here. But she says, listen, on that phone call, Trump didn't insist. He didn't demand. It was a casual conversation between two presidents. Right. And and the, the you know, and the aid and, eventually and, flowed. And, and it, yes. And and it wasn't like the deal didn't go through. It wasn't like Trump withheld the deal in order to get what he wanted. It, it, so in terms of the quid pro quo, the, the quo was coming anyway. So um, the whole thing is just unbelievably uh, – well, to say it's overblown is, a, is an understatement. As I was just so angry talking about this a couple of days ago. Um, and anytime I find myself standing on the same ground as Victor, da Victor Davis Hanson, I feel like, all right then um, – but he he made a point. He gave ten reasons why this impeachment is is not only um, 
immoral but but destructive to the to the country and 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 all of them were sound and the the one i think was the most certainly the most emotionally um appealing was the fact that this is destroying constitutional governance and now the first thing that's going to happen after an election is that the other party is going to begin impeachment proceedings against the person who won. That's the world that the Democrats have given us. It's the world they gave us after the filibuster, uh, nuclear, the, the Harry Reid option to destroy the filibuster. All of these things that are in place in order to make society civil have been destroyed by Democrats for short term political gain. And in the case of the of the nuclear option, they have come to regret it. And I suspect they're going to come to regret this one in a big way, too. The suggestion seems to be in some on the on the left and in the mainstream media that Haley is just greasing the skids for her future presidential run. And in order to do so, she knows she can't offend the Trump uh, base or the president himself. She doesn't want to turn him into an antagonist. And uh, so so it's interesting that she's willing to bring up uh, a, what you might consider to be a mild criticism. But then she says this specifically on the question of impeachment. She said, look, impeachment is serious. It's the most serious thing we can do to a president. We're less than a year away from the election. Precisely. Let the people decide. And then she goes, she says, let them hear the testimony. That's fine. But let them decide. That's right. It's not like we are day one into Donald Trump's second term and there is no other recourse. That's one of uh, Hansen's arguments, and it's a very strong one. We're less than a year away from an election. Um, and uh, and. I think the America, well, the reason I think they're going ahead with this full steam is because they don't want the American people to decide. They know what the people's decision is going to be. I think this entire impeachment thing is born completely of desperation. For the left to say that Nikki Haley is just greasing her, um, her, 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 her tracks for the, for the, um, presidential nomination is to say that the person has no character. It is a, it is a slur on, on Nikki Haley by saying that by any anybody who could say anything positive about Donald Trump or the experience of working with Donald Trump obviously must have ulterior motives. And that explains why um, they're being uh, nice to the guy. Maybe she and, has ulterior motives from the perspective of the left because she's a woman of color. Well, <laughs> but 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 my point is, is that just because she just because it is good for her to support Donald Trump doesn't mean that she's lying or or being duplicitous in saying these things. And and once again, again and again and again and again and again, that we, we see the construction of the narrative in front of our eyes. Donald Trump is a misogynist and a womanizer and 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 he can't and he hates women and every every woman he's ever come in contact with cringes at the mere mention of his name. And you bring out all the executives and all the women that worked with him and said he treated us with respect, he treated us, gave us authority, he he held us accountable, treated us like adults, and um and we never saw any sign of disrespect from him. All of those things go counter to the argument, they go counter to the narrative, and and so those statements have to be isolated isolated, insisted, I mean, put it inside a cyst, and then, and then basically ignored. And so when she comes forward and makes statements like that, not only is she saying the president is not a raving lunatic, she's also saying that he treated me with respect and dignity and, and, and was great to work with. And that is directly counter to the narrative that is being manufactured out of whole cloth. And, and that's why this entire thing is going to disappear. You're never going to hear any of it from anybody. Um, and I, I have enormous uh, respect for Nikki Haley going into this. I have more respect for her now, and um, and I think she's I think she is without question the the one of two or three people who are the future of the Republican Party. And I say when I say the future of the Republican Party, I don't want to say the new future of the Republican Party because I have never bought this. Oh, we're exclusionary and we hate immigrants and we hate brown. But that's not my experience. It's certainly not been the experience I've met I've had at the at the hundreds of events I've been to. And most importantly, it's not been the experience of the gay conservatives I've met, the black conservatives I've met, the women conservatives that I've met. On the contrary, they found Republicans to be overwhelmingly accepting and, and, and welcoming. So I don't want to say that this is the new GOP because we're suddenly changing our, our ways. But Nikki Haley has all of the qualities that I'm looking for, at, at least at, at first, you know, at, it's not, I won't say first glance, but at, I haven't heard anything contrary to this yet, let's say. She has the qualities that I'm looking for in a president. And, and she, by her presence, defeats the progressive argument, which is an argument that is so mean-spirited and low. It's based entirely on the idea that what you're 
what your biological sex is and what your skin color is determines how you think. That's the left's idea of people. And, and that's why you can't be a black conservative or a gay conservative or a woman conservative, because you are biologically locked into being a Democrat if you're any one of those things. It's a repugnant, racist, misogynist, sexist philosophy. And it's been what they've been governing with since they've been here. And and they constantly try to put a fig lead of, over it. But the one thing that they do more than anything, Scott, is they manage through their trumpeting of the news media and and uh, and the pop culture to maintain that the only thing worse than, a, than than the Democrats and they're awful is the Republicans. And they do this on on the basis of no. There, there's no substance to those allegations, but they constantly are made. Behold, the impeachment uh, proceedings. Well, we may have more in the future as I get further into this book, but uh, we are grateful right now for the people at BillWhittle.com, the members who have made this show possible. They've provided the funding. They are the ones who share and circulate this information. The last two videos we had, by the way, uh, related to President Trump um, are really taken off in the last 24 hours on YouTube. And I know that that is largely driven by our faithful friends who continue to amplify this signal so that the rest of the world and specifically I, I the United States can hear it. I haven't looked at the numbers yet. Was the one where I was beeped twice? Is that is that getting some yeah, traction? The bleeping one is doing fairly well. I think that people like Bill Bleepin' Whittle. <laughs> well, I think I think that uh, as as you said after the recording. Um, next time we do a, a segment like that, there should be paramedics in the room. Yes, there should. <laughs> So, and if there are paramedics in the room, they will be funded by the members of BillWhittle.com. If you'd like to become one of those members, go to BillWhittle.com and click the Become a Member link. We'd also, again, like to thank our friends at the Patriot Post, America's News Digest. Click that link in the description below and see what you've been missing at the Patriot Post. For Bill Whittle, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks for watching.